Hello, my name is Ashley and this is Royal Dominion. I hope that everybody is doing good. I just want to say hey to you all on this good Saturday, this great Saturday that God has made, this day that God has made. You know, I'm just rejoicing, especially because it's beautiful outside, period, you know. But other than that, like, I'm rejoicing because God chooses to love us at our worst, right? It's like we think about God and we think about how God has no choice but to love us because his word says that he first loved us, right? But God chooses to love us when nobody else do, don't, or did. And um, God loves us at our worst. Even when we don't understand, even when we can't explain it, even when we don't have any words to say, even when it's inexpressible, even when, you know, we are not determined as determined as we should be, or we're not as busy as we should be, or we don't understand the way that we should be understanding. God still loves us at our worst. God loves us at our best. And he loves us at our worst. And for that, we ought to give God the glory. Amen. And, you know, I'm just, you know, out on today enjoying my day because I rarely get a Saturday off. Like, I work Monday through Friday, but, you know, I rarely get a Saturday to myself because my Saturdays are busy as well. Like, it's like I work a whole full-time job on Saturday, but I'm off from my job on Saturday. And so today is like my first Saturday in a while being free because I barely have Saturdays off. Sunday, I'm back at it because I serve in ministry. So it's like serving in ministry is a full-time job too, right? But Saturdays, you know, that's like a day that I get off to myself, but it's rarely that I get a Saturday to myself. So today, I got a Saturday to myself. So I went out and I ran errands, but the errands that I ran, you know, is not stuff that I had to actually do to get done, you know, before the weekend is out. I just went out and I enjoyed my day, my free day, right? And I'm on my way back home and it's just still so beautiful. It's like, what time is it? 6.30 in the evening. And the sun is still shining so brightly as if it's 12 o'clock in the noonday. Right? Excuse me. So I said all this to say this. Whenever you are going through, still praise God. Whenever you don't understand, still praise God. Whenever you don't have any words to say, let your heart still praise God. Let your heart still rejoice. Let your heart still be thankful. Let your heart still give God the glory because at the end of the day, I got to get close and personal. At the end of the day, God deserves the glory anyways. God deserves the praise anyways, you know. And I had like a compilation of dreams last night. And in these compilation of dreams, there is like only one common, what you call it? theme or one common goal or one common you know message that God is trying you know that God relate to me that the Holy Spirit relate to me that he want me to relate to anybody who I come across and it's not me sharing the whole entirety of the dreams you know but it's me sharing the word the revelation that I receive from the dreams to share with people to share with God's children to let God's children know that we are not alone. We are not doing this thing on our own, even though some of us may be by ourselves, but we have backup and backup is God. We have support, even though some people don't have a support system as far as like parents or a good support system as friends or good people, you know, loved ones that will, you know, that surround them and encourage them to keep going. And, you know, some people don't have that, you know, but God, is your support system. Let God be your support system. Let God be your go-to. Let God be the one that you go to and um, spill out everything that is on your mind, everything that is on your heart. Because in this season, 
If we don't have nobody else, we are going to need God. Number one, because God is pushing us into our divine purpose. The Holy Spirit is pushing us into our divine purpose. Um, if I remember, I'll put that video up. You know, the Holy Spirit is compelling us to go forth. And if we're not operating in a timely manner, we're going to delay our own process. You know, God does not, you know, withhold any good thing. He does not withhold those things. But what he is saying is we don't have all the day, all the hour, all the time that we think we need. You know, God is saying, I have prepared you. Go forth, right? I have already positioned you. Now walk in it. I have already, you know, you are, you've presented yourself to me as a living sacrifice. Now you have to believe that the things which I've placed in you, the things which I've placed upon you is something that will help sustain you, something that will help keep you, something that will help you, you know, um, generate income, something, something that will help you change the totality of your atmosphere, of your living situation, of your, you know, your working situation, of your ministry situation, of your family situation, whatever it may be. God says the thing that he has purposed you to do will cause a breakthrough and a breakout for everything that is around you. Everything that God has attached to you. Your anointing, your virtue, your destiny, your purpose, your will, which in turn is God's will, God's plan, God's purpose for our life, right? Not our own will, but God's will in turn is your will because you sought the Father for that thing which God says is his will for your life, right? So what God is saying that it's time to birth it out. It's time to walk it out. It's time to take Whatever it is that God has given us that we've set on the shelf and allowed to collect dust, God is saying we have to take those things off of the shelf, right? Because they've been sitting up too long. The things have been stored up too long. The things that God has given us has been stored up too long. And it's time for us to unbox it. It's time for us to take it out of the box and put it to work, put it to use. It's time for our determination to kick in gear. It's time for our focus, you know, to be fixated on the things of God because listen, the things, the instructions that God is giving us in this season, baby, these are divine instructions, like the, the, the instructions, the direction, the revelation that God is releasing to his children. It's not just the prophets. We come to confirm a thing. We come to speak a thing, you know, but the revelation that God is giving his children, his church as a whole is really for us all. You know, it is for us all because we are servants of the most high God, right? But our eyes got to be in tune with what the spirit of the Lord is saying. Our ears has to be in tune with what the spirit of the Lord is saying. Our heart and our minds have to be in tune and perceive what the spirit of the Lord is saying. And we have to be able to push start like my car. Thank you, Holy Spirit. When I get in my car, I don't have to take the key and, and turn the ignition, right? All I have to do is push the button and it starts up. God is saying your hands were made to push start. The things that I put in your hands, all you have to do is push start it. That's all you have to do. I've already given you the keys. You got the keys. You have the keys. All you have to do is push start. Like, that's all you have to do. And be careful of not being deceived in this hour. Pay attention and remain focused on, you know, the things that God is speaking to you, right? The, the words that God is sending to you, whether it be by nature, whether it be by his holy word, his scriptures, whether it be by his audible voice, you know, because we ought to be in a place where we can hear the Lord speaking, where we can hear the spirit of the Lord speak to us, you know, whether it be by signs, and wonders, God is still speaking. And God is speaking more ways than one. But we have to be in tune, you know, with God. And 
God is going to use you. Yes, you. God is using us to deliver our families. God is using us to help save our families. God is using us to help bring our families out of the muck, out of the desolate places, out of the weary lands. God is using us. Like, I've had so many dreams of me laying hands on family members. Not just family members, but I've had dreams of me laying hands on a demon-possessed person and them being in deliverance. I've had dreams of me laying hands on people working in deliverance ministries the same ways that I've had dreams of me laying hands on family members and speaking, you know, in tongues, laying hands on family members. Like God is showing me, not just me, God is raising up a generation who are going to be deliverers like Moses was a deliverer. Moses wasn't only a prophet. You know, Moses didn't only just speak the word of God verbally, but Moses delivered God's people. Moses delivered the Israelites out of the Egyptian land, out of bondage. Like Moses was that man. And God is raising many of us up as well to deliver. But you have to be ready. The Lord says, greater works shall you do. He didn't mean that in the sense of we're going to be better than him, doing better things than he did. Greater works, greater works, greater. We're going to be doing more things that the Israelites, the children of that day, could not do because of their faith. We're going to be doing those things because of our faith, because we believe. Greater works shall you do, but you have to believe that you are called in that number to do greater works. Listen, you all, there is so much to talk about when it comes to God and when it comes to his love and when it comes to his plan, his purpose, and his will for our lives, right? But we can go on and on and on and on. But really, now it's time for us to do the walking. Now it's time for us to walk it out. Now it's time for us to put it in action. Now it's time for us to put it in motion. Now it's time for us to do those things that God is calling us to do. Like if God called you to write a book, go ahead and drop a few lines on that paper. Go ahead and start typing your stuff up on your Microsoft Word document, Google document, whatever you do. If God has called you to open up a business, listen, go ahead and do that thing because there are many people, whatever God called you to do, maybe he called you to be an engineer, right? To start up some things, to invent some things. Like, you know, maybe he has called you in the uh, customer service industry to provide your, your godly service, your kingdom service to people like who will appreciate your customer service. You know, everybody ain't preachers. Everybody ain't called to hold a microphone and preach. Everybody ain't called to, you know, travel across the world and, 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 and evangelize. But our evangelism is in, you know, the works that we do, the serving that we do to God's people. That is our evangelism. What we serve and how we serve it. If God has given you an idea, a creative idea, where you're saying maybe it's people that do these things or, you know, but they ain't going to do it like me. God gave me the idea to do it. Go ahead and write out your business plan, baby. Go ahead and put that thing on paper. You know, Habakkuk 2 and 3, it says, write the vision and make it plain. Write the vision and make it plain because those who see the vision, they will take it and run with it. Not saying take your vision and steal it. That's not what the word of God says in Habakkuk 2 and 3. It says those who will see it, the angels, the angels, God is saying his angels are going to see what you write down. They are going to take it and run with it. They're going to take it and go before you. They're going to take what you write down, right? What you speak, what you prophesy out of your mouth. They're going to take that thing and go before the Lord. They're going to go before you and take it to the Lord, right? So that the Lord can touch it, so that he can bless it. Because when you birth it out, when you breathe it out, you're blessing his people. Listen, it's, it's deeper than rap. That's what I used to say when I was in the streets. I ain't in the streets no more, but it's deeper than the ocean. Like Future, Future said, it's really deep for real. Like, I come on, listen, Holy Spirit, 
Listen, talk to your people, Holy Spirit. Listen, I just came to encourage on today. Write the book, start the business. You may not have the funds to start the business, but do what is necessary. Go ahead and write it out. Write your mission statement. Write your vision statement. That's how I started. That's how I started. And the business, my business that I actually started is not even what I wrote down. But the other business ideas that I wrote down two, I think it was two years ago, I wrote the mission statement on some notebook paper. I wrote the mission statement, I wrote the vision statement, and I provided a scripture for each business idea that God laid upon my heart. And all you have to do is work towards it. All you have to do is start speaking that thing into the atmosphere. Start prophesying that thing. Start speaking over it. Start pleading the blood of Jesus over it. Do what it is that you have to do to get you to a place where you are equipped spiritually, you know, emotionally, mentally. Because it's going to come in the natural. It's going to come in the physical. But you have to be able to line it up with God. You have to be able to line up with God. You have to be able to partner with heaven. That's what you got to do. That's what you have to do. And you have to believe that though it tarry, it will come to pass. You got to believe that your waiting is not in vain. Hallelujah. You have to believe that your way is not in vain. Listen, you all, I love you all. I love you, I love you, I love you. I love you, I love you, I love you. Um, my skin is so beautiful. I don't have on no makeup, y'all. I be wanting to wear makeup, but I don't know how to wear it. <laughs> I don't know how to put it on. But listen, I love you all. I just really wanted to come in and encourage you all in the Lord. You know, um, and that's it. That's all. You know, just continue to love yourself. Continue to love God. Put God first above all things. We're not perfect. We're human. We're flesh. God knows it. But make it your business to put God first. And watch how God work in your life. Even when the enemy tries to rise up against you, when the enemy tries to, you know, rise up against you like a flood, the Bible says that God will lift up a standard, hallelujah, lift up a standard against the enemy. And that standard, the enemy will not be able to top it. He will not be able to go above it. He will not be able to go around it. Listen, I seen it with my own eyes. I know. When God says he will lift a, up a standard against the enemy, God will hide you in the presence of, of the enemy. But you got to be able to be hidden. But God is bringing you out. God has hidden you for a time such as this. And now you're coming out. Hallelujah. Listen, I love you all. Be blessed. Be blessed. Be blessed. Be blessed. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.